Before we get to our list, I'd like to give you a quick little update about this series. I'll be using time lapses for my 30 minute sketches instead of our avatars. This makes it quicker to be able to do the videos, since it actually takes quite a bit of time to do the small amount of animation I actually do on the avatars. I will still use them for our longer format pony videos, and maybe some other special items along the way. Thank you, and please enjoy our list. Hello, I'm Lux. And this is Ember, with another one of our completely our own opinion, 10 things in random order, don't shoot us lists. This time we are looking at shows that we would like to see have an unedited release. These are items that have usually been shown on TV, made it as far as getting a DVD release, but uh, it's the American localized edited version. Our opinion? Don't kill us, but share your own opinions in the comments. Number one, Digimon, all seasons. Pretty much all of us have probably seen one season or another of Digimon and gone, wait a minute, I'm pretty sure something just got edited there. The series is fun and definitely has some things that it would be nice to see in an unedited format. Yeah, and you seem to have always wondered about that one particular scene where they get shot with the um, light arrows, I believe it is. Well, yeah, just a little. <laughs> Number two, Speed Racer. All right, so this one's really, really old, and probably the Japanese version hasn't necessarily aged well. But we could really use an unedited Speed Racer considering that his name is not even Speed. That was done by the localization team, which actually consisted of, I believe, just three people doing all the voices. Possibly four, I'd have to recheck my manga article. But even the manga, the complete Speed Racer manga, has the Americanized names. It would be very nice to get the whole, you know, competing with honor intro song as opposed to the Let's go fast and win, song. <laughs> kind of like what happened to Sonic the Hedgehog in the new version. They went from this really cool song to let's go faster. Mm-hmm. Number three, Yu-Gi-Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, this is another series I would wish would be unedited. Pretty much any version of it, I wish they would be unedited. Also, like, get another company to do it. Funimation. Hello, Funimation, you tried once. Ah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there like, wait, what? And the fact that apparently there's no such thing as the Shadow Realm uh, in the Japanese version. It was called something else. So, wow. <laughs> I want to find out this stuff. Most definitely. And, you know, reading the manga, the series is very dark. And I would love to see some of that darkness. It seems incredibly unfair that there is the complete Yu-Gi-Oh! collection, original series, released on DVD. And it's still English edit. Mm -hmm. And then there's a couple of scenes in 5D where I'm like, well, what? that's definitely editing because he definitely punched him in the gut, but you changed it back to the right cross he gave him earlier. What? <laughs> yeah, and don't forget all the missing guns in the original. <laughs> I knew we should have used the invisible tank. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, little Karibo, for giving us that idea. <laughs> and number four. Mega Man NT Warriors. Just looking at this one, you know there has to be more going on. You know, there's some very dark things going on with the dark cards and computer hacking using net navvies. There has to be more to this story than what we saw on TV. I don't remember which one, an American one, but I've heard recently that Mega Man, the net navvy, is actually the soul of a kid that was created by. Uh, I should say, a show that was recreated in the virtual world, or put in the virtual world, by a parent of some sort who created him. Mm, that definitely sounds like something that you wouldn't think would make it past the censors, but to jump back to Yu-Gi-Oh!, the filler arc with the kid who's basically stuck in the digital world. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun filler arc. Yeah, but I think that might be something that didn't make it to the US version because there's a difference between just inputting a soul to have it saved and having it basically be someone's pet Pokemon. Well, the NetNavvies did seem a bit independent, especially the special, yeah, specifically the special ones. Mm -hmm. Number five, Zatch Bell. Oh man, I, uh, please release this unedited. 
I want to double check that. Some of the fan subs I watched were correct on that song. Oh my god, from what I understand, it's about boobs. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, an unedited release of this would be worth it for the songs alone. Uh, I don't even know if it was even completely released over here. I don't think that it was um, on DVD. It may have gotten further on TV. I lost track of it when Cartoon Network moved it online. But I would like to get to the ending. I'd also like it to be openly stated that uh, What's-Her-Name is pregnant by Juan Ray. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty clear hint of, yes, he left something special behind, hand over stomach. That's usually an indicator of something, and apparently Mamotos can interbreed with humans. That works. <laughs> yes, but definitely not something that the localization team would want the children to be thinking about. Number six, Metabots. I really enjoyed this show when it was on, and it would be nice to get an edited release, and I don't... I need to check this myself, but I don't know if they ever actually released it on really good DVD sets. Like, here's season one, here's season two. I think they did that thing where, like, here's five random episodes that we themed around this random theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it only got the kitty show release treatment, where you just get a random grouping of episodes. But it was a fun series, and I love the Tuxedo Mask wannabe villain character, semi-villain character. <laughs> and the interactions with the team and the villains. Okay, yeah, it was a bit campy and cheesy, but it was fun. That was the whole point. I think the whole point was to be campy and cheesy and have it serious moments in there where you're going, okay, it got serious. That's kind of cool. And then it gets campy again. You're like, oh, that works. And it just kind of made you smile when you watched it. Number seven, Mysterious Cities of Gold. I loved the show when I was a kid, and I very seriously debated about picking up the complete series re-release when it came out. But at an $80 price tag, I couldn't quite justify it for the American edit. Mm. Well, I never really watched the show myself, but I heard it was pretty good, especially from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, the voice acting is definitely dated by now, considering, you know, it came out in the 80s. But, you know, the following of searching for the cities of gold, all the tie-in with the sun, the use of solar-powered equipment, the sun-focused clues, the heroes not really being heroes. Mm, definitely sounds like I need to watch it. Mm, yeah, and, you know, kind of a darkness when you have three adults basically in control of three kids who are not their children and that they have no actual responsibility for. Oh. Number eight, Pokemon. I would love to see an unedited version of Pokemon that and for it to just get redubbed, but I don't think it's ever going to happen because, you know, Nintendo. But it would be awesome, especially to see some of the stuff that was edited out. Though I don't mind them editing the one Porygon episode that caused seizures over in Japan. All they have to do is change the flashing pattern or get rid of the explosion. Yeah, you have to feel bad for Porygon though. It was supposed to be a key Pokemon. But, you know, we all know some of what we've missed in Pokemon due to edits, and we've missed more due to localization. And considering that children's shows in Japan seem to take on more serious subjects than a lot of American shows, there's a lot of depth and darkness in the Pokemon world that we don't really get to see. And then there's the whole concept of, wait a minute, there's kids with lethal animals out there going fighting each other? What's wrong with this crazy world? <laughs> yeah, I could probably be its own tin list. <laughs> Put that on the list. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and to actually see the episodes where they edited out the guns. Hmm. Yes, there were guns in Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, though... Considering everyone can keep lethal animals as pets, why do we need guns? <laughs> Good point. Number nine, Beyblade. I didn't watch much of this one. I, at the time, I was getting a little burned out on the team competition type series. And I really enjoyed watching it. I liked the way they did the team dynamic on this one, especially the two main characters who, are, of course, become rivals ended up on the same team. And they did this whole nice arc with the three three or two main seasons, I need to double check that, where the first season, the characters got together and battled as a team, and the second season, they deliberately set it up so everyone would have to split up and go on other teams because it was original team versus instead of just 
team versus. So you get this nice everyone coming together and then this nice everyone being pulled apart because of the rules and having to fight against each other. So you get this great match where you get to see all the characters fighting against each other, but because it's in the tournament, it's not that bad and they get to still be friends afterwards. And it would be nice to see an unedited release because apparently a lot was edited out. When I was doing the research on this one, I was like, wow, I didn't notice most of that. It got the treatment where some episodes were completely removed from the series and other episodes were like heavily edited. Wow. Please give me unedited. I would like to know what I missed. <laughs> Number 10. Samurai Pizza Cats. I don't think either of us have really watched this show much, but the parts we have seen, we enjoyed, and we would like to get a DVD release so we can actually, I don't know, watch the rest of it with it being unedited so we could really enjoy it. Yeah, Great Eastern did recently release the entire series on DVD. Uh, not too bad for an entire edited. I think it was running about $40, but... You know, it's still that same thing of, oh, but it's edited, and I could buy a whole season of Fairy Tale DVD Blu ray combo for that price, unedited. Well, I should definitely see if it's on any kind of streaming surface so I can at least watch what the edited version looked like. <laughs> it looks very 80s. <laughs> of course it does, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you've in Enjoyed Lux's art, you can see more of his work over on DeviantArt. Want to keep track of what we're up to? Follow Lux on Tumblr. Did you enjoy our list? Agree? Disagree? Leave your friendly comments below. If you've really liked our video, please consider subscribing. Links in the description. And if you like my art enough that you want some of your own, please consider giving me a commission. There's a link in the descriptions on how to do that. Thank you, and hope to speak with you soon.